Yo guys, what's up? It's your boy Celebrated here coming back to you guys today with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of a review for the game Wreckfest that just came out uh, about a few days ago, probably a week from when it was. It was probably it's probably been a week since the release date after it's been up after this has been uploaded. I'm not exactly sure when this is gonna go up, but uh, yeah. So going into Wreckfest, I was really looking forward to it because in general the game looked like it had a lot of potential. Um, a demolition derby type game. It seemed really exciting. It seemed like a really good racing game. It seemed like a game that I could put lots of hours into. Wreckfest, drive hard, die last. The art for this game looked fantastic. The trailer for this game looked for fantastic. It was heavily advertised. I saw it all over Instagram because they were using a lot of social media advertising, which is completely fine because you're you know you're trying to reach a younger audience. It just makes sense to uh, advertise on social media when you're a game developer. But Wreck Fest was a game that you know those games where. Small minor details can add up and ruin a game. Yeah, that's what happened with Wreckfest. Because, you know, I first originally tried to try the uh, multiplayer out. And the thing about the multiplayer is, is that the loading screens and the wait times to actually get into a game are actually going to be longer than the game itself in some cases. And in any case, it's way too long. It took me about a minute to a minute and a half to get into every single game that lasted about, you know, maybe five minutes. And it seemed just kind of, like, kind of ridiculous that it would take that long. Um, but yeah. So right when I got into my game, I noticed that my controller was vibrating super bad, guys. Like, I don't know if you've ever experienced a game with super bad controller vibration. Uh, 2K has really bad controller vibration. I typically turn the vibration off in 2K. I don't know if that was an option in Wreckfest. I didn't look. It might be. Let me do a live update look and check back with you guys in a little bit. So yeah, guys. My apologies. You can actually turn the vibration down in Wreckfest, you just gotta go to the main menu, go over to I M I S C, and then go to settings and controller settings or something like that, and then all the way down. There's a lot of steps to it. It was kind of hard to find, but at the end of the day, you can turn your vibration of the controller all the way down. You'll definitely want to do this for a little bit of a better experience playing Wreckfest, as like I said, the controller vibration in it is absolutely insane. I don't understand why games continue to put controller vibration into the game. I've never met a gamer that likes his hands to shake uncontrollably while he's trying to focus and do good at the game. I've I've never I've never seen it happen. I've never met a gamer that told me that he likes controller vibration, but yet game game developers love to put it in. They just put it in at like really high settings and it's just like, why? But anyways, moving on from multiplayer, the multiplayer was not that great overall. There was a lot of different game modes, but with a big amount of loading time and the kind of bad controls and a lot of controller vibration, it, it kind of set me off a little bit. But there was one other main mode left. And that was career mode. Now, when I think of a career mode, I think of like a story to where I'm actually working out a career. But with this career mode, it's just basically a bunch of different challenges, uh, such as the tractor thing that they used in their trailer, which is really weird. And the, uh, I mean, like you can compare it to like. Battlefield 1's, like, war stories that nobody really liked. It's basically like that. It's just, like, miniature stories. 
and it's kind of stupid. There's no plot to it. Uh, to call it a career mode is a little bit of a scam. Just call it challenges mode or something. I don't know. Then there's also single player mode to where you can choose between any track, any amount of opponents up to 26, uh, any difficulty, any driving difficulty, uh, and any other settings you want to change. And you can race against AI opponents, which is alright. I mean, I think it's probably what I had the most fun with out of anything. I mean, multiplayer was pretty good, but... See, the thing is, is this game worth a $40 price tag compared to other games coming out within the next few months? Now, personally, I got to think about games like Blair Witch. I got to think about games like Greedfall. I got to think about games like 2K20, if you guys are into 2K. Uh, I got to think about games like Call of Duty. I gotta think about games like Tom, the new Tom Clancy's game that's coming out. Um, let me check what other games are coming out. I'm just on my pre-orders right now. You gotta think about FIFA, NHL, The Walking Dead, or the Complete Tall Tale series at least. Um, NASCAR Heat 4 is coming out. NASCAR is probably gonna be a big competitor to Drive Fest, or not Drive Fest, Rec Fest. And I can't see that Wreckfest is going to be better than NASCAR Heat 4. Uh, racing fans are probably going to go for the NASCAR title over Wreckfest just because it's a bigger title. And people tend to believe bigger titles more. But I got to think about Borderlands that's coming out. And Coach Vane. Um, Ghostbusters. Remastered. Um... WWE, 2K20, Need for Speed's coming out this year. So there's just so many games coming out within the next month or so that it's really hard for me to recommend this $40 price tag that has a lot of control issues. Uh, gameplay wasn't all that great. It seemed super slow. Uh, oh, and here's another thing, guys. The replay value on this game is extremely low because the best car in the game is actually the pre-order bonus that people got. So, even if you grind the game, you're never going to get the best car in the game. And, you know, this isn't just me. The stats say that the pre-order bonus is the best car. Everybody was using the pre-order bonus. It's just facts. It's the best car. So, if the pre-order bonus is the best thing in the game that you can earn, that means that there's no replay value, because no matter how much you grind, you're never going to get anything better than you got on day one. And so that means that there's basically no reason to grind. And with that being said, it puts the value of this game even lower. Now, I would... Highly recommend this as a sale-based game. Once this game is at GameStop for 50% off, then I would say go ahead and pick it up. But for $40 right out of the gate, like I said, there's too many other games coming up to really worry about this specific game. And I would rate it probably 4.5 stars out of 10. Yes, yeah, so this is about it for this review. If you liked it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up. And before you guys comment and are like, uh, but he didn't talk about my graphics. What about the graphics review celebrated? You saw, you saw the gra you saw the graphics during the gameplay. You saw the graphics during the gameplay. You judge for yourself. No, nah, I'm just kidding. The graphics are low key pretty good. I don't care about the graphics that much though compared to the rest of the game. It's just not worth the $40 price tag. It's worth a $20 price tag at the current moment. Uh, ooh, I'm low-key excited for Blair Witch, though. That seems like a good game. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace! Ooh.